What if Luffy ate all these fruits instead of the Gomu Gomu no Mi? With numerous devil fruits in the world of One Piece, and some with truly devastating powers, it's a miracle that no fighter who possesses them has yet to claim the position of Pirate King. However, it is interesting to imagine what series of events would take place if Luffy had eaten one of their fruits instead of the Gomu Gomu no Mi. In this video, we'll answer that question. How the story would continue, and what Luffy would look like with the other fruits. Let's start with the first fruit, the San San fruit. One of the strongest devil fruits among the warlords, it's actually surprising how Luffy would fare in the show with his sand abilities, instead of the rubber skills that we know so well. Since it's classified as a Logia fruit, Luffy can no longer be attacked by a fighter who's not well versed in hockey, and his new capabilities include drying anything he touches, transforming into a cloud of sand, and shaping sand into sharp objects to strike opponents. As in the case with all Logia fruits, the sand fruit has probably one of the biggest weaknesses, water. Sand Luffy would lose his indestructible status if even a drop of liquid happens to come in contact with him, and unfortunately for our protagonist, the earth is 71% water. Womp womp. However, if we pit him against some of the antagonists of the anime, he would still probably come out on top. It's doubtful that Luffy would ever even have gotten captured in Logetown, since his body is literally made of sand. So that takes out Smoker from the equation. Crocodile, now armed with probably a different fruit, would also be easy meat for our hero, since their fight took place in the middle of an actual desert, so we can imagine how that would go down. One of the worst matchups would probably be Luffy versus the Ice Logia user Aokiji. Considering the fact that the boy has still not mastered hockey, he would already be faced with a disadvantage. Pair that with the fact that Aokiji has a constant source of melting ice at his disposal. That would render Luffy's sand powers useless, as well as the sad reality that the Logia user knows hockey. We can assume that this would mean the end of the road for our protagonist. Now let's say that Luffy eventually does learn hockey during the time skip, as with the actual plot. However, since his abilities are significantly heightened due to the Logia fruit, it's doubtful that he would have mastered hockey with the same intensity. This would eventually come back to bite him in the ass when he comes face to face with the overpowered Big Mom and Kaido. With enemies like them, it's more of a battle of whose hockey is more developed, and honestly, Luffy should dig his own grave before he decides to verse these two antagonists. Now let's see what will happen if Luffy ate the Tremor Tremor fruit. Whitebeard's devil fruit, known as the Gura Gura no Mi, allows the user to create massive and destructive vibrations for their attack. Such is their intensity that it can be used to destroy literal islands, and Whitebeard even used his abilities to create earthquakes, crazy huge waves, and knock out opponents with a knuckle sandwich. Despite the raw destructive potential of the fruit, it would probably be the worst power in the reckless hands of someone like Luffy. Even with the Gomu Gomu no Mi, his carelessness is vividly apparent, but now you give him earth shattering abilities as well, may god save us all. Considering the fact that Whitebeard was an adult with a far better chance of controlling the powers, and even he almost destroyed all of Marineford. Moreover, the destructive powers of the fruit may end up making Luffy even more hasty and he would eventually do more harm than good, thus painting him as a villain rather than a hero. However, if Shanks decides to stick around and teach our protagonist how to control his newfound abilities, it might make it easier for him to adapt. Even then, there's no guarantee that their training sessions would go smoothly, and there being instances that Luffy loses his cool and causes Earth shattering damage. He could even accidentally end the lives of his friends such as Ace, Sabo, and the other bandits he grew up with. Furthermore, if the situation gets out of hand, a warrant for his arrest could be made by the rulers of the Goa Kingdom, who have now begun to fear for their lives. Let us just say for the plot that Luffy does manage to take control of his powers, and once his training is complete, he sets sail while using just his base strength. His first real challenge would be against the sand user Crocodile, where just his base strength would not be enough to emerge victorious. As a result, he's forced to utilize the destructive abilities he shies away from, and this would probably cause the collapse of the entire city of Alabasta. So while he does defeat his opponent, it would be at the expense of major collateral damage. If this continues on all of Luffy's journeys, we can assume that the marines would eventually be forced to take a stand, and send an admiral to put an end to our protagonist's adventures. As seen, just having the strongest devil fruit is not enough to make our hero shine, but also the one that is best suited to his characteristics. This fruit was really powerful, but what if he ate the shadow shadow fruit? Moria's seriously powerful shadow fruit allows the user to control not only their own shadow, but those of anyone around them. Moreover, its abilities also include taking over someone else's shadow and using it to bring a corpse back to life as well as adding to your own strength. As if the possible combos of these features were not enough, 
the user is also able to manipulate their own shadow that acts independently from the user. As the hero, the shadow fruit would be the total opposite of all that Luffy stands for. Once he takes someone's shadow, they would instantly die if they came into contact with sunlight. Now we all know that our protagonist is not a cold-blooded killer, no matter the situation. So now he would either not utilize the fruit to the full extent of its power, or he would sacrifice his moral compass. Moria does not seem to have any second thoughts about murdering innocents to fulfill his plan. But if Luffy decides to go down the same path, we can assume that an extreme character change would occur, and he would no longer remain the protagonist we know and love. No matter how ill-fitting, let us say that Luffy does take these newfound powers into his stride. After training with Ace and the rest of the bandits, he would have managed to become quite an expert at the different techniques, and we could say he's even given competition to Naruto with his Shadow Clone Jutsu. However, he would probably fail at his first real encounter against Crocodile in Alabasta. He only managed to survive the first time due to a combination of his durable body and his blood and water. Without these, as well as a lack of hockey, we cannot see our protagonist emerge victorious against this Logia Sandfruit user. If he was stumbled at the very first obstacle, you can already imagine how his other fights will go against much more overpowered warlords and admirals. All in all, this devil fruit would be the worst fit in this list for Luffy. Finally, we see what will happen if he eats the pawpaw fruit. The paw fruit eaten by the warlord Bartholomew Okuma has some of the craziest powers among all the devil fruits. It grants the user the ability to repel anything and everything, from onrushing opponents to intangible concepts such as pain and memories. Not only that, the user is also able to travel across the planet at the speed of light by simply pushing himself. Now imagine Luffy with these powers. The potential for this fruit is limitless. Luffy may be able to push out his ability to age, basically making him immortal. He could push out the feeling of pain, which would make him indestructible. Heck, he can even make himself smarter by pushing out his stupidity. This would definitely give a whole new spin to the story with Luffy. After 10 years of training, not even needing a ship to travel across the sea, he could simply jump between islands and travel to wherever he wishes to go. Another theory about Paul Luffy is that would he have even needed a crew? He's doing everything by himself and traveling alone means that a crew would probably just hold him down. Even with Kuma, even though he does have mates, he's usually seen alone. Maybe it could be a con of the fruit that it naturally repels people away from you. Regardless, let's say that Nami and Zoro do join him. They would definitely regret doing so, considering that Luffy's choice of traveling is just launching the three of them over large distances. Moreover, as soon as he encounters an overpowered opponent, say Kaido, his first instinct is to just escape from that area as fast as possible. Eventually, Nami talks him out of this tactic with the reasoning that just skipping off these challenges would never bring him closer to becoming a pirate king. As a result, he may see sense and decide to form a crew and sail the seas on a ship, with events unfolding similar to before. Obviously, the fact that he's armed with his ridiculous strength, we can see him easily taking down opponents which he would otherwise have had a hard time against. The only ones who could probably have given him a challenge are Kaido and Big Mom, but his determination would have eventually helped him come out on top. I hope you liked this video, and if you want to see more cool videos like this, check out this video. You can click here to see it. Go on, click it.